Are you going to start? Yeah, you. Yeah, that works. Yeah. You start. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome, everybody, to Here we are. episode four. <laughs> episode four. I thought I was going to start. You starting? Uh, we, we, I mean, yeah. I'll start. Oh, you, you go ahead. You do it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to episode four. Episode four. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, this is the Butthurt Owens Valley Podcast. I am James Truels. This is my co-host, Chase Little. Hey, Thank you, everybody. Bro, the moderator. It's good to see you, man. It's, it's been a while. It feels like it's been a year. Yeah. So I, much has changed. Really? For me, like, occupation. Oh, changed. because of your surgery. Um, well, I, that was a very delicate uh, procedure. Right. And it was very successful. Every, I told everybody last episode that you had to get a new butt because there was a crack in yours. Yeah, well, and the, <laughs> it ended up they, you know, they removed the stick that was lodged up there. So. Oh, that's good. I feel more relaxed. I've been told by the many people that I, I have a better place in life. So that's um, it feels it feels nice. So they got rid of the crack and the stick. I still have the crack. So did they just they forego that? They said it, it was more about the stick. Oh wow. Okay. Yep. Yep. So that that was successful. Everything went well. Good. I'm glad that you're up and walking around. I can't believe it's such a quick recovery time for a sur- such an invasive surgery. That Saturday, I was at a doctor game. Wow. Fast it was. Wow. UC Davis medical staff. Thank you guys. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is by her Owens Valley podcast. Uh, I am James. This is Chase. Um, exclusively on Eastern Sierra now. Exclusively on Eastern Sierra now. How you guys need to listen to it, how I listen to it, is I downloaded the Eastern Sierra Now app, and that's how you can reach out and get all of the wonderful uh, podcasts that Eastern Sierra Now does. They do offer quite good ones. I've been watching um, the, uh, uh, the the mechanic one. I can't remember the name of it. Shorty Shop Talk, yeah. He's got some good advice on there, so check that one out. And then um, Amy also has a show called Business Matters. Business Matters. I never look, I don't look at the names. I just watch the videos. Yeah, no, I mean. Is that weird? No, I think that's how it works yeah. with a lot of things. This, last, this one with Amy's cool, that Peak IV. Have you guys seen that place in Mano? I've never seen it, but I've heard good things about it. It's banana bag. You know, you go in and you get your IV, all the different yeah. vitamins and everything you need. Really cool. They got like cryogenic therapy. Dope. They got like a UV ray sauna thing. It's awesome. Like I got to go in there the other day and check it out. And they're they're coming on as a sponsor with Eastern Sierra now for everything. I and always yeah. wanted to open a mobile truck with that option. Maybe you could convince them to do it. Yeah. What do you got in your hand there, Jesse? Oh, well, see, everybody, I'm going to speak loudly because my voice isn't on microphone here. Uh, you have to go back and watch the first episode if you haven't yet. Otherwise, it's not going to be 100% funny for you at home. But Amy and I decided we were going to make you presents for starting your own podcast hey. here and doing such a good job. Hi, Jesse. So we mm-hmm. reached out and this, we got our idea from the first episode and we decided... I'm wondering if I'm going to get the joke. Here you go. Oh, is this going to... Shoot a snake out or something? Yep. How do you open this thing? Oh, a mug? God damn coyotes. Dude, that's <laughs> badass, man. How absolutely awesome is that? <laughs> that is really cool. Radical, bro. You know what? Oh, huh, yeah. There you go. Now you got cups for this. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, maybe I'll throw up the video real quick just because it was hilarious from the first one. You guys can so they can see what's going on. Why would you try to pet a coyote? Can anybody guess what happens? Can you guess what happened when he tried to pet this thing? Yeah, bro. He got bit. Oh, he got bit hard. Actually, Jesse, Jesse Steele is in the uh, sound booth right now, everybody. Could you clip that video for us and so, uh, show these people just in so case they haven't good. seen it. I mean, it, it, and it's, it's completely brilliant. It's, it's so a, we're going to check that out right it's now. It's mammoth in a nutshell. <laughs> Come here. It's cold. I know you're freezing. We got a lot of fur though. Ow, mother. Ooh, son of a bitch got me. Ow. God damn coyotes. Yeah, Amy drew uh, all of that on the goddamn coyote side, and then I put the butter logo on the back. Really? So, mm-hmm. That's so cool. Yeah. And let me tell you this, I have a couple extra, so if you guys want to give two away on your episode today, 
come up with something. For sure. However you want to do it, we'll get somebody those two extras. They can come pick them up. All right. Yeah, that'd be great. Maybe, uh, how about the first person that puts a comment on all four, it'd be five, four, episodes, four episodes, on the first person that puts a comment on all four episodes gets a cup. For sure. sure. And we, we have one extra after yeah, that. Two extras. So there's three, there's three in total? Two total. So there's two total. Yeah. So the first person that does that gets one of them, and then we'll come up with another way for someone to get the second one. Love it. Sounds great. Figure it out by the end of the episode. Figure it out by the end of the episode. And if you want to get this wonderful, luxurious, beautiful Beach OV podcast cup, <laughs> celebrating our inaugural episode, Goddamn Coyotes, um, yeah, comment on all four episodes. Probably should have washed this out before I... I didn't wash mine out. Yeah. That's why I built my immune system There's like just, It's just dust. It's not really that big of a deal. It's the best time. That's how COVID happened. That's how COVID happened. So, how... <laughs> Honestly, I've, I've been really good. Um, I got my, um, I got a new rifle recently, and I've been shooting it a lot. And um, are you a six five guy? I am. <laughs> oh, you six fivers crack me up, bro. What you what you like your bullets to tumble? Is that your favorite thing? No, I don't. I shoot a seven mag. Ooh. <laughs> I shoot a man's gun, bro. Oh, you just you like the punishment on your shoulder. It just kicks like a twelve gauge, man. Like I've been like, it's just a little cute. Meh. Anyway, check this I don't picture out. Whisper, like I got just it's three rounds at a hundred yards. Really? Yeah. Nice. What kind of scope you run? I have a Leopold. Gold, gold ring. Gold ring. Yep. That's it. That's what I shoot on mine too. Yeah. So three by pretty... twelve. It starts with a V. I forget the name. I don't remember the name of mine either. But anyway, yeah, that, that's what I've been doing late. I've been shooting a lot lately. So. Actually, I took my last animals, even the one in New Zealand. Um, I shot everything in New Zealand and my last mule deer with a 270. Nothing wrong with a 270. Bro, they are legitly one of the best rounds um, for large game. Like, I hit that stag at 368 yards wow. and sat him down. That's a good shot. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it, I have 140 grain. Okay, yeah. yeah. It was I mean, I have never had a chance. And then the uh that you could shoot lead in New Zealand here it's copper is what you know, right. the copper round that I shot um that mule deer in and he didn't move. <laughs> he Just literally down. Down the the exit wound on the back side of that animal was I could put my fist through his ribs. Yeah. Cuz when he turned and just gave me a little Hi, I'm cute. I said, "Slam." And he went, Nice. And then it was venison. So um, we'll just get right into the uh, the butt hurt. Um, I don't have the stats on any of this stuff. I just have some um, just some screenshots that I, I took just that way they're easy to find. Stats. I'm a stat guy. Um, so on this one, the the receipt one. I don't know if you want to check that out while sure. I'm reading this. Um, this guy or gal, whoever it was. Um, oh, the taxes. Yeah. Mm. So there's a they bought an item it looks like for about a hundred dollars it's 93 98 is the uh subtotal um and they have a california state tax of six percent which was i mean who who likes paying state taxes it's not fun uh then they have an inyo county tax that's a quarter of a percent right and then they have a bishop city tax that's one percent right and then they have an inyo county district tax which Seems odd that you have two county taxes. I mean, just because it has an extra word, I guess, makes it different. It's at 0.5%. Sure. And then in your county local tax at 1%. And that's that's a lot of different taxes for just... I mean, that's three taxes for the county and one for the city and one for the state. Right. That seems excessive to me. Um, I mean, I know the taxes, you know, get us common use things or we don't know what they're going to but you know that just it just seems excessive because the he ended up paying or gal whoever it was ended up paying 102 dollars and 20 cents for the item so i think what that equates to is they're breaking it down into right so it's it's still the same 8.75 percent Right. Tax that that the county um, applies. And then it, I think what they broke it down to do is just to show where that money actually goes to. 
Yeah. Right. I think that's what it is. Yeah. It's just kind of like, cause a lot of, I mean, I want to know where my tax money goes to. I, I think that was a, a thing that I voted on a number of years ago to actually so, see where my money goes to. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, what, what, like, where's my money, my hard earned money. Where does it go? Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's it's kind of a shame to see it all, I guess. I, I'd almost rather not see it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm with you on that. Like, just I, put tax. For sure. <laughs> you know? So a lot of you um, are familiar with who I am, uh, and I'm always kind of out in the open about what I've been doing um, for employment. It's always been really fun stuff, big stuff. Uh, and I recently got the opportunity to take over um, management position at Ascent Dispensary. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, I, I have to tell you, the tax in the cannabis industry is insane. Oh, yeah. To the point to where I build in the tax on my cards, right? So the price on the card is the price out the door. And I've started doing that because a gentleman from Oregon, he was, you know, I told him the cost of the total, and he was like, hey, wait. You know, that's that's like almost twenty dollars more. And I said, okay, well, there's this tax, this tax. Taxes was actually on his transaction, nineteen dollars eighty five cents, something like that. And he literally looked at me and said, "Fuck that," and walked out. I don't and I'm just it. like, I don't like. I know you're not mad at me, right? But like, right. I dude, we're taxed enough, bro. Yeah. Well, so check since we're talking about taxes and we were just talking about firearms earlier. Yeah. Um, starting. I believe it's July 1st in uh, the entire state of California. <laughs> uh, it, you have to add an adi- for guns or ammo, not for accessories, but guns or ammo. You have to add an additional 11% sales tax. <sighs> on too. So if you want to go buy a gun, you're looking at 19.75 sales tax here in Inyo County to buy a firearm. Lord. And so if you buy a $1,000 firearm, you're looking at almost $200 in taxes. That's wild, bro. Isn't that crazy? Anyway, we'll get off of it. Isn't- support anything. You're going to have to get some uh, sponsors on this show, huh? So, a same dispensary, if you'd like to support this show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we uh, actually, uh, speaking of which... Um, I mean, it, we've said on the show before that you don't have to be a business owner to sponsor the podcast. Correct. There's plenty of ways to do it. You can Correct. find uh, information on easternsierranow.com. Yep, Patreon, baby. Uh, you can check it out there. You can always reach out to you know you can reach out to me on Facebook. You can, I, I don't know. It, reach out to me on Facebook yeah, for sure. We, uh, but we actually put together packages yes, recently we for um, for advertising, advertising. purposes. Um, I don't know how they would work with um, just an individual. That'd be kind of funny, like like say you had some na- some dude named Jake. Be like, this episode is brought to you by Jake, and you have to talk to talk about Jake for a minute. Yeah. That would be pretty funny. I love that. I would pay for that if I wasn't already a part. I will. I. I <laughs> this is one of the segments that I want to do, and I want to do it as a service for everybody out there. And it's just breaking bad news. So if you have any bad news to break to a person, um, anonymously or not, you can message me on my Facebook, James Edward Trolls, uh, butthurt, any way you want to get a hold of me. Excellent. And I will break the bad news live on this podcast. Every... It's not live. We don't... This isn't live. (laughs) I will break it. I will break it every Friday. Every Friday. So we we put these in the can on a Monday. They come out on a Friday. Um, So, uh, yes, if you feel like breaking any bad news to anybody, let me be that bearer of bad news and I will break it to them. This is the first I'm hearing of this. And it sounds like a great it's amazing. idea. Yeah. I love it. You should put a number on that and then all the money you make goes towards what you do by giving it away to people and stuff and then you can buy things to give away on the show that's a good that. idea too and yeah get some way to, other than you just being the bad guy yeah totally we're gonna it. see if it gains traction if it does gain traction maybe i'll put a dollar like just a dollar i don't want to like yeah it's, like you know a dollar yeah and right go to the fun man yep and then we can use it to buy stuff and get yep. people prizes and, and that would be funny if we had like 50 people to break bad news to. yeah <laughs> oh that. that'd be so funny if like it and then like you could even do it anonymously. Like, it, you, I'm not going to tell you who it came from, but you could say who it goes to. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that, that's, exactly, that's exactly it. Oh, that's too good. I love that. I like it. 
Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen. Um, I'm sure a lot of people probably have seen this video by the time the podcast comes out, but um, the FedEx driver that was driving down, uh, well, it looks like he's crossing Main going yep. uh, down uh, westbound on Line Street yep. with the back door wide open. That was pretty funny. That was a good little video. Not in the video that I saw, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if it did. And whoever that FedEx driver is probably it just feels like an idiot. Yeah, that over. poor dude, man. They have enough on their, their plate, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. those guys, they do a lot, and they don't get a whole lot of credit for it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they literally are, are Santa Clauses and are Easter yeah. bunnies. And, yeah, they you know, bring my packages all the time. I appreciate it. I'm, yeah, right? I love those dudes. But, hey, bro. Um, I know you guys are now because you're famous on Butthurt for it, but shut them back, those. <laughs> <laughs> right? Not Butthurt. Thankful for I got rid of the name there. And Big Pine for pounding on my door this yes. morning because my house was on fire. Yes. What uh, a so great thankful Samaritan. thankful for the very fast actions of everyone. Yes. And that's, you know, you got to give uh, praise where praise due, man, Bro. because... I mean, I'm pretty sure the person that lives here has, like, a whole family, like, wife, three kids, something like that. You are like the that. man. You are and, the man. And uh, to the gentleman that knocked on his door and uh, banged yeah. on his door. Hey, that's awesome. That's well, so... That guy banged on his door is part of the volunteer fire department and has been the, the chief. Oh, really? Oh, Rad. So he's a total hero regardless. But yes. So you guys spend that donation money on whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get that guy a leather chair. Yeah. <laughs> Get that guy a fucking leather chair oh, yeah, that massages. A personal friend of mine, and that's, you know, super glad of that. Because well, all those old school houses like that, they're tinder boxes. They're ready to yeah. go up. He, he actually got lucky. He told me, because I, I remember when this was happening, his dad tore it down to studs and rebuilt the house probably 15, 20 years ago. At this oh, point. wow. And um, he, he, when I was talking about this, he was thinking that his dad actually did construction work um, like to the letter, like what you're supposed to do up to code. Yeah. Because otherwise they would have died. Because he did an extra thick inside of the hot water. Because the hot water heater is a little on fire. Extra thick. And, uh, yeah, extra thick. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so he was like, thank God for his dad. <laughs> yeah. Doing that, so, Bro. yeah. Uh, last episode, we were actually talking about uh, that post, um, how people were butthurt that the volunteer fire department was asking for donations for the um, fireworks. And uh, I mean, I don't know where you stand on it, but me, Jesse and I were agreeing that like, hey, man, if, if you're getting all the safety equipment that you need, you yep. got money left over and yep. you want a comfy chair. Yep. I'd, I'd go ahead, man. I don't. Yep. I'll pay for a chair. You, you I know those dudes, man. And I know yeah. they're they're absolute, they're legends. They're heroes. You know what I mean? The Jason Forehands, like th those guys who are out there risking their lives you, you mm -hmm. on a volunteer basis. It's just like th th we can never repay them for what they're doing voluntarily. Right. Right. So yeah. like shout out to all you dudes out there yeah. um, 100%. On, on the on the volunteer fire department. Um we couldn't support you anymore, and I'm glad you guys got leather chairs and big screens. I hope I hope they're all 82s, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, I hope, I hope them lazy boys have massage and heat. Like, it's, I hope they have cooling technology. I, I, I really do. Dude, my, my girl bought a new car not that long ago, and it has the cooling seats. Oh, bro. Shit. This time of year. Yeah. Makes you want to wear a kilt. Yep. Oh, man. I'll tell you what. I, I got in there with some shorts on one time, and I was like, man, those things actually do blow pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> I have my hoochie daddy shorts on, you know? Yes. High elevation environments are known to cause dehydration, external fatigue, headaches, insomnia, and delayed muscle memory. Proper hydration and electrolyte balance is crucial to maintain optimal health and wellness and allows you to perform at your best. Based in Mammoth Lakes, California, Peak IV Therapy and Hydration understands the health and wellness benefits of IV therapy, and we provide the highest level of care to our clientele. Through IV therapy, our goal is to help you optimize several aspects of your life such as athletic recovery, proper hydration and electrolyte balance, altitude reprieve, stress relief, increased energy levels, and immune support. Whether you live in the High Sierra or are here to visit, Peak IV Therapy and Hydration seeks to maximize your experience at altitude.
So, uh, yeah. Um, I did see you pour something into your cup. It was water. Right? It was water. I poured water into my cup. Now, I kind of would like to know what type of water you're drinking and how you feel about it. I'm drinking Arrowhead water. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's the worst It's the worst bottled water on the planet. It's the worst bottled water. Yeah. What, what's your number one? My number one that I like? Yes. A bottled water? Correct. It's probably between um, Smart Water and Body Armor. Body Armor makes a water? Yeah. Dude. Yeah, they do. It's, it's pretty good, yeah. Mm -hmm. They usually rock Fiji in here, but yeah, we, we went to Giggle Springs, and they wouldn't sell us the case of Fiji. So we're like, they, they're like, it's only for individual purpose. So we're like, well, crap. Who so doesn't? just grab the Arrowhead, because whatever. Yeah, that's Arrowhead. How, that's how that happened. It's almost like you can taste the chlorine in the Arrowhead. And then, I mean. It tastes like LA's water, bro. Well, and so does Crystal Geyser. I, to me, Crystal Geyser tastes like tap water, and this is Bishop Tap Water. That's so crazy to me because I love Bishop Tap Water. It's yeah, my, it's, my it's favorite, it. It's the shit. Better than this. Yeah, but yes. Crystal Geyser, I don't know. There's something I don't like it. It's and well, I think it has a lot to do with its bot where it's bottled from because there's multiple plants, and if you get the Olancha one, it tastes like Bishop Tap Water, and if you don't get the Olancha one, it does not taste like Bishop Tap Water. And that's legitly a thing. See, I've never even looked, so yep. I, I might have never had the Olancha one. Yep, it's good. It's I like it. It's tap water. Yeah. For me, um, it could be. I mean, it, if I could have never had that one, so yeah, yeah it, I could be totally off base. But here's the thing, though: if you're like, oh, I don't like Coca Cola. Well, if you get the one that's, that's canned <laughs> in, in, in Naples, Florida, right? Then you know it's pretty uh, yeah. good. Mexico is absolutely. I, well, yeah, because they use real because they use real cane sugar. <laughs> I, if you guys are wondering, would you like to know what water I prefer? No, no. I yes, like yes. Voss. Uh, you're Bro, so Ooh, fancy pants, Rich so McGee over good. here. <laughs> Bro, Voss water slaps, man. I love Voss. I do water. love that it comes in glass. Does it still come in glass? Yes, it does, and it's so good. And they have a sparkling in glass too, and it's oh. just hard to beat because I like my bubble water. It's nice and bubbly. I like my bubble water to taste like TV static. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, I like it to taste like white noise. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just not from poultry guys. No, yeah. Yeah. Well, not yeah. 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 Life gets boring sometimes. So Voss, yeah, I'm a Voss dude. Yep. Yeah. I, actually, I, I do like Voss a lot. I just haven't had it in a while. They don't really sell it at gas stations too often, I don't think. I seen one of the butt hurts on here, and it is they were butt hurt. They didn't know where to get an ice cream sundae. I think Brownstown. By uh, the way, Brownstown, if you want to be a, a sponsor. I think Brownstown is the only place to get in no, legit. Denny's. Oh, Denny's. Denny's, right? yeah, yeah. You could. And then we have the. Uh, Natural. We got the, <laughs> the 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 Froyo place, right? That frozen yogurt oh, yeah, shop. Well, yeah, but that's yogurt. It's yogurt. Yeah, which it's pretty close texture. I mean, but they just take something nasty and freeze it, and they're like, "It's better." I'm like, no, it's not. I love frozen yogurt. God, <laughs> TCBY, bro. Don't you remember TCBY? That was good. Hey, bro. Yeah, yeah. Man, that was before you were born, dog. TCBY. Yeah. Well, pizza factory is by Taco Bell. Yeah, I I went to Pizza Factory, and then in Family Fun Center. Yeah. <laughs> I forget you're you're not as young as you look. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, I'm butthurt. This guy parked his truck here, and oh, when shit. I told him I have a ticket and asked him to please move his truck, he waved me off and left it to go inside and pay. This is at the car wash down there at the south end of town, the drive through one. For whatever reason, you can't use cards at the at the um, the kiosk there. You have to go inside, you do. pay for the car wash, yes. then come back out and punch in a code. Yep. I um. I feel like you should stop there at the at the place, pay for your ticket, and get in line. I think Red Truck Man was wrong. I'm probably gonna hurt some feelings, man. It's, so well, it's okay for you both to be wrong. You and and the and red, the guy the red and truck, red truck man, yeah, yeah. 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 But it's, it doesn't hurt my feelings. You're wrong. I have I have seen it happen in front of me, and I go to the blow and go is what I call it often. Um, I take my my uh, car abuela, that's her name. I take abuela through there for her, you know, routine little blow and go wash. And I've seen that happen. I've had a person do it in front of me, mm -hmm. and when that happened, I have to tell you, I was fucking butt hurt. I was like, look at this mother. 
pardon my language, right? Like, look at this SOB, the audacity to park and then walk out and then come back. And I was heated. And then we went through whatever happened again a couple times later. And I thought about it. And spot, as far as the spots go and whoever was there, like, nothing changed. I didn't, it didn't take any longer for me to get in when the person, the first person did it or the, the second time the, the, that happened. I was still, it happened, the, the person who was occupying the space and then this guy pulls up and he goes and gets his ticket and comes back. This car ain't out yet, right? So all you're doing is literally just holding it, you're, you're just in line. Yeah, but you realize that you're wrong though, right? I don't know. Because, because if he... You already paid, right? Sure. And you were in line. You were going to get in line. Sure. You would have been in his spot. So you would have been right after that car that finished. Because you already paid. Because you already sure, paid. Sure. I, I understand that, right? Right. That is, there's, there's that part of it for sure. I, so basic, it, I wouldn't call it. But he a, pulled, like if he pulled up and it didn't take the card and he's just like, well, fuck, I don't want to lose my spot in line. Is it his fault that the business doesn't accept card it where it should? I think that's the root of the problem. Why is really, the business not fixing this? It's been years. Well, yeah, and not only that, not only does it not work at the kiosk for the the um, the drive through car wash, you can't get gas at that place with a debit card. And after the sp- hours, it, there's, it's Speedway? like taped off. Yeah, it it's says, ta- you have to go inside. Pay today. inside. And so, then once they close, closed? you just... Yeah. So it's like, how much money are you guys losing? By I, not accepting yeah. cards. I know the dude who runs that, and he's a hell of a good dude. So I'm, I could guarantee you it's, it's, he's not wanting to lose dollars. Oh, it's probably corporate. Right? It's it probably, has to be a corporate it, thing. Yeah, corporate, get, Speedway it. corporate, get your shit together. And dude, by the way, if you want to sponsor the Bahar Cast, go yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, let's talk smack about him. Then. <laughs> no, but for real, bro, that's sponsor. like, come on, man. Right. Um, I, I still think that. In that situation, red truck, red truck, like if you were, I mean, if you were like a total gentleman and be like, oh, pardon me, like, I'm sorry, this doesn't, I, I can't do what I came here to do. I'm going to go figure this out and, you know, leave. But like, I don't think he did nothing wrong. Agree to disagree. We agree to disagree. But her, this town was pretty cool at one point, local shopping, and now it's overrun by hikers or whatever they call themselves that <laughs> don't shower and smell horrible allowed in all the stores and restaurants. Least they could do is clean up if you're going to eat or shop. We don't want to smell that. Do you know who left that message? We're not supposed to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a good point. Yeah. All the time? Did we say that? That we was said a rule, that all right? the time. That if was anybody a, wants to one, see, huh? yeah, if anybody wants to see who put that on there, just scroll through the butt hurt page. It would be amazing it. if there was a company in town that like could like put out a shower though for him. But at whose expense? At theirs? Just so they don't have to smell it? Just like a promo, like I don't know if there's a like promo. a promo, like a local <laughs> a right promo shower, like a promo shower, bro. Like come on through, get cleaned up. Just be- rolls up to a parking lot, right? Yeah. <laughs> Chase, how many times? Have Oh, dude. Because you're in there dancing, you know, yeah. like, drinking. And yeah, like, getting oh, all funky. Yeah. Dude, getting I, all funky. I do get tired of it. I'm like. Yeah, that's bad, dog. Yeah, I mean, and some places are worse than others that smell like feet all the time. Everybody knows where I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. We're not going to get into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But hurt. Someone will put five bucks in their tank. To drive to Williams Creek by the airport. Oh runway, my God! To dude. dump their S H I T, but won't pay a five dollar dump fee at the landfill. Right. It's pretty ridiculous. It is. It is it's nasty. I'm, it, do better. Do I know. It, I know it's not the butt heads out there doing it. It's so but. like it's just so disheartening. Like the homie Glenn Clark, um, the Trash Pandas, uh, Eastern Sierra. Right. The. Uh, Trash picker, I forget Eastern Sierra trash pickers or something like that. Like yeah. those guys do such a, a great job. What is this? Uh, it's uh, organizations that are volunteer basis that go out and clean stuff like that up. Oh wow, that's cool. So that I I cool. go with Glenn. Glenn is he's a trash panda, um, and then we go out and I've actually been to that site uh, previously, and we cleaned that site up before. And it's just unfortunate that somebody has chose to do that again. Yeah, we were talking about shooting earlier. Yeah, bro. Out there, Polita, 
Pick up your shells, people. Come on. That's brass, dude. It's money. And not only is it, but also the shotgun shells. Dude. Oh, yeah. It's just like it makes it look trashy. It, it does. Pick it up. Well, then that eventually has become a, you know, might be a point of contention to where you're not allowed to do that out there anymore. That's I've been saying that for a long time. And it's it's the public land, man. We need to respect this public land. Mm-hmm. Like the you know, don't be a dick. All right, this one I thought I I laughed out loud when I read this one. I'm butthurt that California will never do what Oregon and Idaho are doing. Can you imagine if part of California became Nevada? So I believe what they're referring to is um, Klamath uh, County, which is basically like the first county you get into when you leave Northern California and head into Oregon. Okay. Um, uh, They've been trying to secede from Oregon for years and become part of Idaho. It's never going to happen. Right. And to think that I know that they're talking about here, I mean, because it would be awesome if we were in Nevada instead of California, but <clears throat> it's never going to happen because of water. Because w- then we then it'd be like Nevada is selling water to, to California, to Southern California. They've it would had never the, happen. The, the split of the state into four and five different um, Californias. Oh, like the Jefferson thing? The state of Jefferson. Right, so it'd be like Northern California, Southern California, state of blah 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 blah. Right? Yeah. So um, yeah, that, I, mean, I think that is a better possibility, and actually, just demographically, dude, like California is massive. Oh, it's huge. Right. So yeah. if you're in San Diego, um, and I have made the drive all the way up to Humboldt, like if you're if you're doing really good time, it's like eleven and a half, twelve hours. Right, right, and that's what were, you, what were you doing driving that far? Um, I used to like to sightsee a lot in my uh, in the time I spent in Humboldt, so I, oh. I did a lot of sightseeing. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I definitely Humboldt, huh? Humboldt County, yeah, we had a lot of sightsee people that would mm. like to drive down the coast and see right. the sights on the I 5. That's what you would do and end up in San Diego doing a trip from Humboldt to San Diego as many times as you could, bro, yeah. <laughs> but no, seriously, and actually, I think I don't even think I'm telling you the truth. I think it was like 13 or 14 hours. So I um, believe it, Espe- uh, bro, but, especially once you got into Southern California, you hit it the wrong time. But it then, can easily turn to 17 hours. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. But then when, when you're when you get into Eureka, where we used to live, you're still two hours away from the Oregon border, right? Right, like an hour and 40. Because yeah. like, you have to get up to Crescent, and then you have to go all the way up and through. So, like, people that are calling, like, oh, you know, and, and it's the Bay Area. It's not northern, southern, what are NorCal, blah, blah, blah. The Bay Area is the Bay Area. That is a whole right. different world. Oh, yeah. Right? But then when people are just like, yeah, man, you know, I'm, I'm up here in Frisco, and, and we're in northern California. Dog, you're six hours from the Oregon border. Right. Six hours. Yeah. So, like, California could be split into several states. Oh, yeah. I mean, it'd be great if, if, if Bishop was part of Nevada. Yeah. That'd well, be, I think it's like the, the eastern state. I forget what they want to the name best. it. But it's it would be more conservative for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe not here, though. I mean, you know, the, the hikers <laughs> <laughs> that we talked about earlier. <laughs> Oh, yep. butt hurt because people bring their not friendly dogs into public areas. Not friendly dogs are dumb. Not only that, but you know, honestly, I mean, I don't care if your dog's not friendly. If you have control over it on a leash, I mean, let it pull yeah. a bark. I don't. I mean, I don't care. Now, if, if it breaks away, now we're gonna have a problem. I just I don't like mean dogs are. They make me sad deep down inside. Well, it makes me sad too because it more often has more to do with like either the owner or the previous owner than it does with the dog themselves. And just the vibe, right? I, I know this and like before I got my French Bulldogs, I, I really researched into what type of dog would serve me the best for my lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I knew I did not want a working dog. Right. I have people who I know who got a working dog and keep that dog just locked up. And it's the grossest thing in the world. Yep. Like I could just hear that dog howling all the time. It never goes out. It's a cow dog. It's a Queensland heater, healer. And it needs to be in a pasture healing things. Mm-hmm. Right. It needs to be chasing and herding. And it is stuck in a yard and it's just sad. Like, yep. and, and like other people, you know, who have like working dogs, labs, goldens, uh, Short hairs, German short hairs have the one of the highest drives to go do things. My dad had tests and he had the time to do it, but he would run tests like f- she would do like four or five miles twice a day wow. and beg to do more. Right. Yeah. So w- when I got my Frenchies, I knew like what I wanted. I 
wanted a dog that wanted to be around humans more than other dogs and just chill and be a companion. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you right? have to cons- if you're even adopting a dog, well, you know, buying or adopting whatever your preference is. You have to consider your lifestyle. Have to. Be, otherwise, you're doing that dog a disservice. And then in in my research, I you know sees him along the dog whisper. You know what I mean? That homie, <laughs> like he, like it, his w- explanation of how dogs react to your vibe that you're giving off. So if, if you're just like, oh, please don't bite this guy. Please don't bite this guy. Your dog's just like bite. You want me to bite somebody like, right, or yeah. don't run away? Like run, we're running right now. So it has so much to do with the energy that you're giving off that your dog, dog is vibing on. Right. And then like it it could be that the owner of that dog is just a little bit nervous and doesn't want those things to happen. And the dog is just like kind of fixated on, oh, it's time. It's time to get it. Yeah. So Um, there's options out there. I got one more thing that we're going to touch on here. Yeah. um, Just because uh, we brought it up last show because one of I mean, I haven't even watched last show. Do you want to slap me? He's near a horrible code. But you know what? <laughs> you were in the hospital. I get it. It's it's okay. I had the stick successfully removed from my bunghole. <laughs> uh, last episode, we touched uh, on, well, it was actually kind of a bigger segment about the uh, mural wall on the studio out there. Yeah, um, I think that thing's badass. Dude, one of my favorite ones. <laughs> I laughed so hard when I saw it. It's like, uh, I don't remember who did it or whatever, um, but it's like a raven. That's wearing boots and like a birthday party hat, <laughs> like the cone hat, dude. And that one just cracks me up. Was, there's actually there's three of them, and they're all like slightly different, but they're all wearing boots and party hats. Love like, it, like little kid birthday party love. hats. Cracks me up. I love it. But anyway, we're talking about the bighorn sheep thing with the so so basically what it is. It's hard to tell from the pictures, some of them, and with all the convoluted stuff that's going on with um, with people's opinions about it it's basically a bighorn sheep head a bear body and eagle wings okay right. so um i'm not going to say the person's name on here that that did it because i mean it is public information well it's displayed publicly so sure. anybody anybody who's interested in that wall by the way you can go to that place and then if you look um i think there's one in the middle and one on each side it there uh there's a picture of it Whoa. and they're all numbered and then there's just a description of the number and what the thing is Where? and who who did what, it what it represents who artistically. did it and what it represents exactly sure. so i'm looking per- like this post reached 3000 people and it has 300 plus comments so oh, it yeah. was the devil is what you're saying so the artist said it's a depiction of the devil. No, that's not what they said. <laughs> of course not, <laughs> bro. It's a bighorn sheep. So it's uh it's called composite bean. Okay. And says composite bean contains three of the animals inhabiting Eastern Sierra region, which by the way, somebody said the only reason I don't like it is because it has nothing to do with the theme in our valley. <laughs> and I was like, uh, what? <laughs> so um, So yes, we do have uh so and right here it says bighorn sheep. Yep. We have those. Or two different variations. Right. Which are? Well, you have the desert bighorn and you have the Sierra, the endangered species, the Sierra bighorn. Right. Okay. Yep. Uh, bighorn sheep is the first one. The head, the eagle, the wings. Which, yeah. Um, two variations of those two. Yes, we have golden eagle, bald have, eagle. We do have both, and then a and bear. Okay. Which there are bear here. It's not two though, but those bears love beats and they play Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> In my trunk, you'll find a series of pelts. Under the smallest pelt is a bear horn. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. <laughs> Their merging is symbolic of inclusivity and aspirational as are individual differences in this community and beyond coverage in one humanity. Beautiful. Our LGBTQIA+, plus, woo, that's a mouthful, community members, no pun intended, are here to stay bear stance i celebrate their strength perseverance and contributions bet that's beautiful man so so people can everybody's entitled their own opinion yeah you can be upset that it has something to do with the lgbtqia plus community it's probably what it is but the artists themselves did not say that it depicts satan so get off your soapbox Get, you know, now, if, if you want to be upset because the LGBTQIA plus stuff, hmm. go right ahead and be upset about it. But 
That's wow. that's the description of right. The that's that's it. Well, it falls right in with the artist stuff. I, I won't say much because we're not saying names and stuff. But I know this artist very well. You're right. Yeah. And this artist is very creative. Yes, right. this Possibly artist is very artist. creative. Right. Yes. And if you that's know deep, who this man. artist is, you'll know other stuff they've done. It's sure. Very and all you got to do is go down there and look at the mural and see that it's number 10 and look at number 10 on the de on the description list and it'll tell you who the artist is and the description that i just read i i mean i think it's pretty badass bro all the way around you know what i mean like and obviously dude, people so that picture is old there's so many more now that's so cool it, I, it looks I love great. i love the like culture like i don't know this one I, it's badass i like that that's, that's amazing! Oh that, my that's god! Was like I think it's coyote, a hawk, and a and a, a, a snake. Yeah, um, yeah. That's, Sidewinder. That's, yeah, that's one of my favorite ones. Dude, right there. this this but, place is so. That's I mean, as far so as like happy. aesthetically pleasing, that's one of my favorite ones. Mm -hmm. But the ravens and the party hats, yeah. that's my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, last episode, I was talking about getting the mural artist to come here and draw us with oh, fig leaves on in different poses. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think she might have seen it, like the one that has the um, the Mobius. Trip. Oh, right, yeah. Did she reach out? Uh, totally reached out and said, are you looking to do some kind of a mural at your place? I'm like, we're not going to do a naked mural here. But <laughs> it might be cool to do a mural. I have a big wall. Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't yeah. be fully naked. You'd be at the yeah, fig, fig leaves. On. I yeah. think it's that... I think that a lot of people can be like that old school, get off my lawn, which I'm kind of one of those dudes at times. If it's my lawn, yeah. That's not my lawn. Right? Can you please stay off the grass? Um, <laughs> I think th that just it, having a goat head, Baphomet, devil, worship, Satan, uh, 666, right? Right. And it's a, dude, th th it's a different, there's a, Baphomet's a goat. He goat. Sheep are not goats. Right. No, they're not. They taste different too. They do. Yeah. I prefer goat. Goat's not bad. I'm going to tell you right now, antelope is some of the best meat I've ever ate in my life. Antelope. I like goat out of the ground the way them Chicanos do it, bro. Doing it big. It's antelope amazing. is my favorite game. It's so good. Well, and wait until we go to New Zealand and you kill some other Me? animals. Yeah, we'll go. I want to go with you. I don't want to. Dude, how about those New Zealand You do. Tags? Those are the ones that I shot. It's amazing. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to go to New Zealand. Yeah, you do. It's too long of a flight. It's 13 hours of torture and yeah then you have like five days of the best time you'll ever have in your life i need to sight in my hunting rifle though you sighted in at the ranch at the ranch yep because i i don't i don't use my six five for hunting of course you don't it's a six five you use it to be silly with yeah it's a competition rifle it's not built for hunting oh my competition yeah bet He's just mad because I'm a better shot than him. Probably. <laughs> I mean, in my older age, bro, like, hang on to your 30s, man. Once you get in your 40s, your shit starts you just dropping. It, well, not only that, it's just like I'm a little more shaky than I used to be. And it probably because the years and you years. you take your blood pressure medication. Well, it was years and years. <laughs> I Thank you. I'm, my blood pressure is just doing fine. Um, uh, the years and years of alcoholism, right? Mm. When I was an alcoholic, I didn't shake for shit. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm going to tell you the truth, man. I, uh, and now, like, I'm fairly steady, but, like, I even, you know, I like when I'm doing intricate and I'm gluing things or, like, I had to fix my glasses today with my glasses off my face. Oh, how are you supposed to do that? Uh, and I noticed, like, when I'm trying and I'm looking, I'm squinting and I'm getting a huh, and I'm just like, chukka, chukka, chukka. Yeah. Like, I don't. Or what was it? You know, I'm too shaky. This is my shooting hand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. <laughs> So there is a butthurt post, and I hope it is false, about our beloved Chinese food restaurant, Imperial Gourmet, closing. Yeah, we talked about that. So you guys already you, touched on it? you were having your surgery, yeah. Uh, oh. But, I, uh, I, we have a spotlight on that Tanner Rush did this week for us. For sure. Yeah, he spoke to the managers and the, and the people that own it while he was there. And the manager is taking an opportunity to own a job down in L.A., so, <sighs> right. so it's going to close down until they can get a different manager. Oh, okay. But there was multiple people interested in buying the business at that oh, time. Oh, wow. And that's the scoop that we got. Wow. So probably won't stay closed for long. Right. But it is, yes, they will shut down. So they can get some manager is leaving. Yes. Yep. 
waiting yeah. for a new manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other new, opportunities being taken. Manager, a new manager or possibly or might be sold. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, hopefully if hopefully they either get a manager or if they do sell it, they sell it to somebody that just wants to keep that going because, I mean, the community loves it. I mean, I, yeah, I got to admit it. it's been a long time since I've been there, but I do like it. They have their own take on Chinese food. Well, yeah. it's it's Eastern Sierra Chinese food, bro. And I, I I can't tell you how much I appreciate their flavors. And when I'm out of town and I, I'm looking for those flavors, I never find them, right? right? Because their dishes are just kind of a unique flavor. And I, it's something that I, I chase. And I don't well, – I talked about it with uh, my wife, and, and she's always like, you know, you're always chasing something. You have your favorite, and you're chasing something to, to find that's better. How come you just don't hold on to your favorite? So when I go out of town, like I love chicken fried steak or eggs Benedict, right? Mm -hmm. And I'd have my favorite chicken fried steak and eggs Benedict. And they just happen to be local. Jack's Waffle Shop at one point in time in the 90s was making the best chicken fried steak I've ever had in my entire life. Yeah. And it was thick and it was breaded and it was delicious. The gravy, I mean, just on point, right? It's different now. It's, it's not as, the flavors are almost there. Right. Right. So it's still my favorite, but I've never found one better. Right. And then Grandma's Seasonings, bro, their Eggs Benedict on a Sunday morning. Is it good? I've never had their Eggs Benedict. F word, dude. It is so. F word. <laughs> it is so. It is, Chase. It is so magical, man. Um, everything is, is, I mean, damn near perfect. If I, if I could just coach them to do one more thing and, and uh, it would just be toast the egg, the, the McMuffy, the little, um, what do we call those things these days? English muffins. Thank you. The McMuffy top. <laughs> If that was just a little bit like, because that texture, the the yolk is always perfect. Hollandaise sauce is on freaking point. Nice. Like it is, it is my by far my favorite eggs Benedict I've had, and I've had eggs Benedict, you know, all the way in Hawaii. Ew. Yeah, it's delicious. Oh, yeah. It had um, that one had lobster. Mm. It was good. Well. I think that about does it for this yeah? this episode. Did I touch on everything I wanted to? Um, I Mule so. Days. Mule Days is happening right now. Shout out all the Mule Skinners. This is going to come out on uh, Friday, and Mule Days will be over. But yeah. um, it's really neat to see the community come together. Yeah. Right? On so many different ways. Uh, the support that comes out for the youth, the support that comes out from something that's dying. Mule Days, unfortunately, is never going to be as big as it was in the 90s. Yes, it is dying. Remember when there would be like 20,000 people that came here? Oh, yeah, it was, it was insane. It was like 1997, 20,000 people. Insane. And the, it's just unfortunate that, that you know, the attraction to mules isn't ever going to get the traction that it did um, in the 50s, 60s, 70s when packing was, is, you know, a, a real life. thing was life. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the youth isn't just taking the places of those uh, wonderful mule skinners who are going on to the next part of their journey. Yeah. So it's, but like Mule Days is so special, bro. I hope that it stays here forever because it's just such a great time. Yeah. Let's touch on one other thing too, actually. It happened today. So yep. uh, it'll come out, you know, this will come out Friday, but um, the Bishop Union High School uh, marching band was in D.C. today at the Memorial Day Get parade. Out yeah, of they were they were everywhere. featured on. Get out of town. Yeah, they were on the news and everything. Bro. Like, dude. oh yeah, yeah. Jesse will put the video up. Yeah. Congratulations, super guys. awesome, man. Like that's that's such a big honor for that's like you know. I mean, all the bishop, bro. We all on the, the way we out here, there. man. We on the map. And I watched the video, and they actually they, they sounded great. You know, of course. So, and it was good. Like always, you know, from my house, I can hear the boop, 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 boop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Ryan Middleton's done such a good job with that band and all the yeah. stuff. Yeah. So both middle yeah. school and high school. Yeah. So. Yeah. That guy crushes. I love that dude. Yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They did, they did a good job, man. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, good episode. Remember, buttheads, like, subscribe, do all that stuff, comment, try to win a, a really cool uh, oh, yeah, coffee mug. <clears throat> oh, yeah, we need a second. You know what? We'll come up with the second way after the first one gets won. Um, or do you, wanna, do you think you have something right now? Um, shh, got nothing. Yeah. Yep. We'll come up with another way for the next episode for the second cup to be won. Hopefully, we can announce a winner Yeah. Uh, for the first cup, and then we'll come up with a second way. Yep. These things are dope. Um, yeah, with that, uh, I am Chase Little. I am James Trolls. This is the Butthurt Owens Valley Podcast. And remember, hippies, take a shower. Yee.